Hello everyone, Steve from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. Just doing a brief update video for the latest RC release of the Retro Arena for the Odroid Go Ultra. We've, uh, well, Johnny and I have managed to get Retro Arch working properly. What I mean by that is it's got GLES as well now, so you no longer have to use RGUI, you can use the XMB menus. A lot of help from Johnny on that one, so big shout out to him. The other big change to this video is the addition of FCA Mod Emulation Station, made by F. Caruso, and worked on by Christian Haitian, and to some degree also myself. We use it on most devices, and most of you know this already. Having this back allows us to use themes from Kodi and Jetup. It allows theme configuration here in the UI settings. So I could, for example, change my background, add blue accent to it. Also, when you're scraping with this newer version of Emulation Station, you can grab videos and you can grab 3D box art as well. Another major change to this current build is that we've restored Flycast, so Naomi, Atmos Wave, Dreamcast, and Sega Saturn all to using RetroArch. And you can see the time in the corner there. If you want to set the time to your time zone, I'll leave um, in the description of the video. I'll leave the how-to. Just it's only a couple steps. A couple steps over SSH. Got tongue-tied for a minute there. So as you can see, we got the RetroArch menu here. This means that you're free to adjust your video controller settings as you see fit. N64 also works through RetroArch, but I've left it with standalone Moopin just because it runs slightly better. Muppin, however you want to pronounce it. You get the point there. Every Atmos Wave video shows Dolphin Blue, and since we got a little bit more power here, I decided to go with Dirty Pigskin Football. Which surprised me by, by actually running. I really do like that game. Let's go Monkey Ball. Monkey Ball is a game I've always really enjoyed. Now with Naomi it will take a moment to launch and if you get an error about the board not being compatible with the game it means you're using an outdated set. You need the latest MAME sets. I think 2.20 onward. Zero point two two oh, I should say. If anyone was curious, this reflection here is the amp for my base cabinets. 
It's a Harky LH1000, 1100 watt. Now, if you preferred Retro Run for some reason, or you find the performance to be slightly better and you wish to use it, there's a, a configuration file, or CFG, located at slash etc slash emulation station, and then in the old configs folder, you can copy and paste the Naomi, Atmos Wave, and Dreamcast that use Retro Run over top of what's in the current config to go back to Retro Run, but you will lose the GUI and the ability to configure your own controller which is the main reason I added it. A lot of people needed to be able to configure controls for Naomi and Atmoswave. Sorry about that. As I'm doing the video, I'm actually trying to build a more up-to-date version of FCA mod to get the battery option back in start and a couple other tweaks there. Locale, for example, language selection. If you can set your locale, it should automatically fix your time zone, right? So. I can hear a little bit of audio crackle. Not anymore, but I could. What I might do is revert Dreamcast itself to Retro Run and then leave Naomi and Atmoswave because I know that for some games you can't um, you can't use buttons that you need to play them, so you have no choice but to use Retro Arch. Retro Run actually works perfectly fine. That's not the reason why I'm taking it away or not using it. It's simply because people need to be able to configure the input to their liking, and they can't do that. Also, it's running at 640 by 480. You could lower it to a lower resolution and also improve performance. I haven't done that personally, but I, I do know it will improve performance. So, as always, um, I want to give a shout-out to Christian Haitian... Johnny on Flame, Jet Up, Cody, Hard Kernel, and Crash Override. LCD games are on my personal build, but they're not working properly yet until I get a standalone MAME working. And that's about it, really. Everything else is working fine. In the future builds, we plan to add back the OTA updater, as well as the theme downloader and Portsmaster. Portsmaster was the primary motivation behind making ArmHF libraries work, or 32-bit. But yeah, as I said, that's about it. Just wanted to give you guys an update as to where the build is at. I'm rebuilding FCA Mod Emulation Station for a few more options right now. After that, I'll work on getting Portsmaster in there. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.